say it again. Say, resist the enemy and he will feed. The number one thing, and I'm getting ready to close, that pain will do. Pain will make people quit. Because you ever heard somebody say, you know, I can't take this anymore. Too much for me to bear. Can't handle it. Have we said that? Am I the only one in this place that said that? And it's sad because we see people and it hurts us when we see you as believers get to a place to where you say, I, Charlie, I can't, Pastor Don, I can't, Pastor Kathy, I, I can't do it anymore. I, I can't take it. It's just too much for me. You know why that upsets us? And you know why it will hug you even harder? Because when you're saying that, you're so close. You are so close. Because the devil is going to fight you the hardest when you're at the end of your battle. Man, you, you're, when you feel like giving up, you're, man, if you can just hold on, my child, weeping may endure for the night. Psalms 30 and 5, but joy cometh in the morning. I love Jesus today. I love him because he's honest with me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I'm going to, I serve a God that that's real, man, it, that I'll deliver you out of me. I serve a God that, you know, when, when, when I'm unable to, to meet him, that my God is so high that he'll get down and meet with me. He'll get down in here and draw in the dirt. You know, he, he'll get down on your level. It's because sometimes we can't get to him. But sometimes we have to take God to people. If you're in a hospital bed, you can't be here. If you're laid at home depressed with the sheets over your head, am I talking to somebody today? Can y'all relate to me? Have y'all ever been so depressed that you just peeled the sheet over your head and you just wanted the world to go away? And when you pulled the sheets back over, everything would be okay? You ever been there? Am I the only one that's ever been depressed? Am I the only person that's ever fought that nasty spirit of depression? To where you just wanted the world to go away and magically when you were done and you decided to get up, then magically everything was going to be fine. But it doesn't work that way. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. But you can't hide from it. You have to deal with your pain and take it to God and believe that he is able to deliver me. He is able to set me free, that he is able to save my family, that he is able. My past is exposed. You can't expose me because I've done expose myself. <laughs> All of it. I've let it go. Because the, ne the devil never will remind me and have power and authority over the mistakes of my life because I don't have any mistakes of my past anymore. I don't have them. I have a testimony, but God has taken my past and made it clear. My God, if God don't remember and he forgot about it, who cares if anybody else remembers it? Am I real? If it bothers you what somebody else thinks, then you really don't care what God thinks. Just being honest. If it bugs you and it bothers you to a place to where you get depressed about what somebody says... Remind yourself real quick that God does not care. He's already forgiven you. He's not worried about who you used to be because He cleansed you and made you whole and a brand new creature. It's been forgiven and forgotten. Yeah, look at somebody and say, just deal with it. 
You've got to deal with the resurrected Savior now that lives in me. You ain't dealing with the same Charlie Brown anymore. You're dealing with the resurrected Savior that's working through this vessel. I've got a brand new name. I've got a brand new anointing. I'm brand new now because I know he lives inside him. I wish I had a church. Somebody say it's getting hot in here. The truth is hot. Let me get to the end of that verse and I'm going to close. I'm going to do my best. Jesus Christ himself on the cross. He went through two types of pain. He went through a physical pain. Watch me and I'm closing church. Watch this. He went through a physical pain that we all have through movies and we've all through the scripture tried to picture in our mind of the nails in his hand and the pain. The thorns, I have a crown of thorns that I pass around and let everybody feel. And a lot of times people get pricked and begin to bleed. I tell them to be careful, but you really can't be careful with a crown of thorns. What are you going to do? It hurts. It's a crown of thorns. It's going to prick you. But I'll pass it around on Easter. I had a whip made with glass shears in it with sharp pieces of metal and I will pass that around and every year somebody gets cut not bad but it pricks them I'll tell the parents you know it's your choice if you want your kids to touch it it's not on me but just to there's something about there's something about holding something isn't it church to relate to what our Savior went through and you pass around those nails and you kind of can imagine where they pierced him in the sword, the Bible says that it pierced him. Thank you, sir. Pierced him in his side. And I have a sword at church, and I don't pass that around. There are certain things that just won't do. Because I don't believe in everybody. I love them, but I don't believe in them. But there's something about being able to relate to what our Savior went through. What do you think he just said that for? It wasn't just words that occupy and fill gaps in our Bible. Why, why do you think he said that? Lest you fall. Lest you get discouraged. Know the pain. Watch me, church. Know the pain that he suffered through. I would say, let your pain motivate you. Let your pain push you. Let your pain better you, Bethany. Let your pain take you to a place to where you can stand and have all authority and conquer every pain in your life with the authority that God has given you. How can we do that? God honored His Son Jesus because He did not run away from His pain. That when He was abused, that when He was talked about, when He was betrayed... You know what? Yes, it, it did bother him because the Bible said he, he had tears in his eyes and he cried and, Lord, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. But, but Lord, if there's no other way, how many know that's a son talking to his dad? Lord, if there's no other way, I'll do it. I'll gladly give my life. God honored his son because he didn't run away. God honored His Son because He had faithfulness in knowing the job and the duty that He had in ministry. God honored His Son because when people betrayed Him, the same people that He prayed, watch me church, the same people that He laid hands on, the same people that were healed by His ministry were the same people that were standing on the other side of that cross yelling, Crucify Him! And so why should I get to 
discouraged when I got friends that talk about me and I find out that they didn't really love me the way that I thought they loved me. The people that I shared my life with that I, I loved and I hugged and I kissed and I nurtured and I sat down and supped with and ate with. Those people betrayed me and didn't really love me. I'll stand firm and say, but yet my God went through the same thing and if he did it, God lives in me. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ because he strengtheneth me. You know my favorite verse that you come this year? With men you shall fail. And that meant so much to me this year. Because with men, family, friends, you will fail. But with God... All things are possible to them that believe. Stand your feet. Somebody say, hallelujah, he's done. <laughs> Man. Huh. When some of us, our emotional pain has shut us down. Instead of letting it shut you down, draw energy from it. Can I share this with you quickly? Some of you might want to write this down, but faith operates in these ways. And I want to say this for people that don't know it, because some of us know it. And some of us live it. But I'm speaking to some people in this place that just don't know it. They don't. But faith for somebody's, I want you to repeat this with me. Say faith for salvation. Let me explain that. Faith for your salvation is a personal trust in Jesus Christ. Say that again with me. Say faith for salvation. It's you getting to a place into your life that you have faith in God to save you. You have faith in God to change you. You have faith in God to redirect your life. And for those of you that have made that commitment, lift your hands and say, I have that faith. I've trusted God for a new life. Number two, faith in prayer. Say that with me. Say faith in prayer. Let me explain that. Faith in prayer is having confidence in our Lord and Savior that He listens to our every cry. Our faith operates when we pray, we believe. The Bible tells me that when I do pray, pray and believe. He even tells me whatever a mountain today symbolizes to you that God is able to move that mountain out of your way when you have faith enough to pray. Do you not understand that the mountains in your life today by your faith and by your belief in Him, God can move out of the way. If He doesn't move them out of the way, He'll give you the ability to cross over them. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for faith. Number three, faith in the unknown. This is a big one for Christians because faith becomes, number three, it becomes the substance that we hold on to and are able to grab when we don't know what's going to happen. When we don't know our tomorrows. When our tomorrows is filled with doubt and question marks. Lord, when am I going to be loved? Who's going to love me? Lord, where am I going? What's my future? Lord, what do you have for me? That's when our faith steps in and God gives us the substance of faith to grab a hold onto and say, you know what, I'm going to live for God until my love my position whatever your heart desires come to pass my faith in the meantime is something that gives me substance to hold on to will you hold out your hand like this and say lord give me something to hold on to which bethany said that her faith was growing and her prayer was for more faith one of the biggest ways to get faith is faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. 
Look at me. I'm going to throw this in here again. That's why coming to church is so important. Because your faith grows. Because you're hearing the word of God. Then your faith is manifested and multiplied because I'm hearing it in my ears. Listen to this. Number four. Say this with me. Say faith in life. Let me explain that as a, as a working principle. A principle that works on an everyday basis. For we walk by faith. Somebody say this with me. Say we walk. What a sweet spirit in this place today. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Lift your hands and say, God, increase my faith today. Close your eyes in this place. I want to speak to your pain today. I want to speak to your, your spirit today because I, I want to speak to the very situation that you're going through. And I want you to understand today to let your, let your faith grow and let your pain motivate you. Let your pain get you to a place to where your relationship with God is so strong that when you call upon the name of Jesus, something changes in your life. Do you understand me today, church? What a sweet spirit. Do y'all feel the sweet spirit of Jesus that is, that is in here today? I'm speaking to somebody in this place that if you don't have the, and if you have the fear, I want you to break past that fear today. That the pain of you in your life has before stopped you and even put you on the verge of saying that I quit, I can't handle it, it's, it's too much for me. I want you to come down here with me real quickly and step down here to the front and let us agree with you today. Those of you that have ever got to a place to where your pain was too much and you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to deal with it and you're tired of surrendering and you're tired of giving up. Will you come down here with me? It's okay. Don't be ashamed. Nobody's going to judge you in this place. Come down here with me and let us agree with you. Let us pray with you that you're able to let your pain motivate you instead of making you stop. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Will you say this when we say, I love you, Father? Man, I love him today. How many have enjoyed Jesus in this place? How many have enjoyed Jesus in this revival? There's still two or three people that need to come down here. I, I know you. I can see you. I see you. I see you sitting there. You got one foot out in the aisle, one foot where you're sitting. You want to come down here so bad. Break through your fear. Come on. Come on, break through it. Break through it and come down. Let it be a first step. Come on now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We're just here to love you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands this way, church, if you will. Man. Man, we thank you. God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your own. Thank you for obeying Jesus today. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting our pain push us to a greater calling. God, I thank you today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, everybody. Stretch your hands and release your faith to the ones that are up here today. For the ones that are still fighting in your seat, we, we ask God to move where you're at right now and to touch you, change you. Thank you, Lord. Let their pain begin to motivate them instead of stop them. Let their pain push them to greater, greater heights and deeper depths in you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to walk by here and just touch and agree with you today. Where's my jacket? I have a few of these that I brought from Fayetteville, North Carolina, but I want to put special in y'all's hand today. I have a prayer cloth that I've carried for months now and have prayed over many, many nights just to have a point of contact that I'm agreeing and I'm praying with you that when trouble does come and life gets hard 
and you begin to let your fear and pain stop you, that you have something to hold on to and say, you know what? Somebody believes in me. He told me that God will let my pain push me instead of stop me to who I'm supposed to be. Stretch your hands this way. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we agree right now. Lord, I thank you.
Somebody say it's a sweet spirit in this house. your hands towards your pastor. I want you to repeat those words with me. Say, Lord, bless, enrich, touch him like never before. Till that man of God. Everything that he desires, let it come to pass in his life. Every branch of ministry, let it grow. Now clap your hands for your pastor. Amen. Amen. Just point your hand this way for a moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The truth that we receive makes us free. Never have to carry those loads anymore. Remember those words, let your pain push you toward him. Don't let the enemy condemn you, beat you up, destroy you. Isn't it amazing that Satan will never remind you of your success in God or your accomplishments? He just wants to beat you and destroy you because of intimidation, what he caused in your past. How many glad for a brand new beginning? Can we just say, Lord, if you've been saved years and years or just now, just lift your hands. Just say, thank you, Lord. Nobody can do me like you. Nobody can give me salvation. Nobody can take away my pain. Nobody can forgive me of all of my iniquities. Nobody can heal all my disease, but you love me. Powerful underlining word in this room today is that in spite of everything we've been through, we're still here because he loves us. We're only still here because he loves us. You can only succeed in spiritual things because he loves you. Father, I praise you for the completed work. It doesn't matter what we've gone through. It matters that we're still pressing toward him. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new start. Last night, the Lord was speaking through a servant. And he simply said, Lord, he's the Lord of the details of your life. He knows all about it. He doesn't expose it. He covers it. He heals it. He washes it away for a brand new beginning. How many of you are just real thankful today for what the Lord is doing in your life, continuing to do? The Bible said He has delivered us, He continues to deliver us, and He will continue to deliver us. How many of we need His blood to wash us and continue to wash us and make us whole and free? Amen. Come on, turn to somebody and tell them everything is going to be all right. Amen. made a statement on a previous broadcasting that we'll be here until everybody else is gone so if there's a need if there's a prayer request or private time we're always going to be the be seated for a moment if you will that way while you're sitting you can write out your check more clearly amen can i say something to in regards to ministry i pray that after 30 years you know that we're not here to take from you we're here to to together to walk and to accomplish great things in the kingdom amen how many of you realize that when we ask for offering, we ask for giving, we ask so that we can help other lives. It, how many know it costs to keep the doors open, it keeps the lights on, to keep the media, keep the outreach? What good is the Word of God if we don't share it with somebody else? What good is our life if we don't give what we have to someone else? And I'm going to ask everyone to repair your giving this morning, tithe and offering, whatever you want to call it. I don't believe anybody ought to limit God to tithe.